In this video, I will show you how to build and run Doom for mobile. Running Doom on mobile is nothing new. You go to Google Play or App Store, download the game and just play it. But building Doom from source for mobile is a bit more complicated. It's even more challenging if you're building for different platforms using the same source base. One way of doing it would be to use the Unity engine and build for all kinds of platforms. Using Unity will certainly work, but in my opinion this would be more of a remake and kind of an overkill. But I really like the idea of using cross-platform C Sharp. That's why I took a C Sharp port of Doom, built it for mobile, but instead of using Unity, I used .NET MAUI. Now before we get into it, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links and source files from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. So what is .NET MAUI? Multi-Platform App UI, or MAUI, is a cross-platform framework for creating native mobile and desktop apps with C Sharp and XAML. Basically, MAUI is used to create cross-platform UIs that work on desktop and mobile with a single code base which means the same c -sharp code works on mobile and desktop. The supported platforms are iOS, Android, macOS, and Windows. And it is open source. Now, MAUI is not a game engine. At the time of recording, it doesn't even give you OpenGL access officially. The only thing you get with MAUI today is a canvas where you can draw on. For a game like Doom, which isn't too demanding in today's standards, rendering only by using the CPU should be good enough. Let's go over to Visual Studio and let's see how it works. I am now in Visual Studio, the IDE, and right here you can see the MAUI Doom project, which you can also find down in the description. The project is based on a C Sharp Doom port named Manage Doom, and inside here you can see parts of the original source code. In a previous video, I showed you how you can build Manage Doom from source and also how you can get the needed dependencies to actually play it. So if you want to play or debug Manage Doom on a desktop yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Before we get into it how it actually works, let's try it out first. In Visual Studio, up here you can see a dropdown where you can choose for which platform you want to build. Currently it is set to Windows, so if you want you can run it on Windows as well, but I will try Android instead. Now in this video I will not go into details how to configure Visual Studio for mobile platforms, but instead you can find the links down in the description. The next step is to plug in your Android phone, which I will do as well. Next I will run a tool named Screen Copy which you can also find down in the description. Let's run it. This is now sharing the screen of my Android phone. Let's unlock it. Use USB file transfer. Yes. When I click this, the connection will be lost. Just start it again. And here it is. As you can see, I already installed Maui Doom on this phone. And what you can also see here is a game that I've made a while back named Snappy Mouse Run. Snappy Mouse Run is a free, endless runner game that you can download from App Store or Google Play, or if you click on the link, up there or down in the description. Now with the phone connected, let's go back to Visual Studio. And again here, click on the drop down, go to Android Local Devices, and here I will select my Android device. Perfect, Visual Studio is ready. And now let's build Maui Doom and let's deploy it on my phone. Play. Now this can take a bit. Build is ready and now it's deploying to my phone. Android application is running. And here it is. Let's allow notifications. And let's turn on the volume. <laughs> So this is now running on my actual device. Let's play it. 
And here it is. I'm playing Doom on Android. Let's find some enemies. All right. So I'm playing with the touch controls. And that was the first level. This was Doom running on Android. Let's close the application. And now let's do the same thing with iOS. First, plug in your iPhone. I will do it as well. Next, in Visual Studio, click again on the drop down. And under iOS local devices, here is my connected iPhone 7. All right, Visual Studio is ready. And now let's build and deploy Maui Doom on my iPhone. Again, with a single click of a button. This can take some time. Perfect, build completed, and it already deployed to my phone. Now, since I built this one in release mode, I cannot debug this one. So I need to start the application manually on my phone. But first, let's share the screen. For screen sharing on Windows, I will use a tool called Wormhole. It is a paid application, but if you want, you can get a three-day trial. That's what I'm using right now. So with the device plugged in, select iOS. Here is my iPhone. Now you will need to install the driver. Now before I click on install, I need to mention that this one will make the iPhone unavailable in Visual Studio. So you will not be able to find your local devices here. Now for this video, this is okay. Afterwards, I will show you how you can make it available again. Now with that said, select install driver. Now it prompts me to restart the machine. So let's do it and I'll see you after the reboot. I'm back in Visual Studio after the restart. My iPhone is plugged in. And as you can see, Visual Studio does not recognize the device. We will fix that later. But now let's try wormhole. Again, iOS, here is my device. I will skip this for now. This is now my iPhone. And as you can see, here is Maui Doom that I deployed previously. And now let's run it. And here it is. So here I'm now playing Doom on my iPhone. <laughs> The game is a bit lagging when I'm using Wormhole. Without the transfer, it works much more fluent. Now let's close the game and let's exit. And now let's see how to make the device again available in Visual Studio. Open Device Manager. And now here, find lib USB Win32, expand it. Here is the iPhone, right click on it and update driver. Search automatically. Successfully updated, close. And again, we need to restart the machine. So let's do it. Back in Visual Studio after the restart, my iPhone is plugged in. And as you can see, Visual Studio recognizes my device. Now I will briefly explain how it actually works and what I changed in comparison to the original Managed Doom project. The original Managed Doom project used SilkNet for rendering and audio. But SilkNet doesn't work well with MAUI, officially it is not supported. So I replaced all the SilkNet references and classes with my own MAUI classes. For rendering, I'm using Skia Sharp, which as I said, gives me just a canvas where I can draw individual pixels on. As already mentioned, Doom is rendered only by the CPU, and this was the case also with the original project. So the rendering logic stayed the same. For audio, I'm using media elements from the MAUI toolkit, 
which work well enough, but they also require some additional permissions on Android. In my opinion, a game like Doom should not request additional permissions, so probably in the future I will exchange the media element with some third-party plugin, but for now this works good enough, so I will leave it as it is. Now, you can run MAUI Doom also on a desktop, like Windows or Mac OS. The problem is that on a desktop the game controls are very different than on mobile. On mobile you use a touchscreen and on desktop you use keyboard and mouse. So for Windows I had to implement my own keyboard handler, which is under Platform and Windows, Windows Input State. So here is the class that handles key down and key up events, as well as mouse movement and mouse buttons. In the future I will probably need to implement something like this also for Mac OS, but for now on Mac OS you need to hover with the mouse over the window to simulate swipes like on a mobile phone. On mobile, as said, you control the game using the touchscreen, and this one can also handle double tap and multi finger tap. In my opinion, the controls are very intuitive. By swiping left or right, the player turns left and right. By swiping up and down, player moves forward and backward. Double tap is firing. Two finger touch is open doors or interact. And three finger touch is opening the menu or escape. This works the same on iOS and Android. Now for the game data and levels, I use the same Doom demo version that I used in the previous video. The data is stored under resources, raw. As you can see, here is the shareware Doom what file and also the Doom config. The files here are set as embedded resource. So when I start the game, I move the files to a local folder. And this only happens the first time you run the game. Now there is also something in there I did not mention in the previous video, and it is the Doom sound font. This one is needed for the background music, which also gets decoded the first time you run the game. Once the files are decoded and written into a local folder, the music will start. So it can happen that the first time the level is loaded, you will not hear the music immediately, but just after a few seconds. Again, this only happens the first time when you load a level. This one is also set as an embedded resource. Now here we can see it. Previously my head was in the way. You can find the link to those files down in the description. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. This is not the first time that I'm developing cross-platform GUI applications using c -sharp. In a previous video, I showed you how you can create cross-platform GTK applications using c .net. So if you want to develop cross-platform GTK desktop applications yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.